Number eight, graphs. Graphs are a very common type of analysis to run in SPSS. There are a number of different graphs available, including, for example, bar charts, histograms, box plots, and pie charts, just to name a few examples. In this video, let's go ahead and conduct a bar chart on the variable gender. So to do that, let's go back to the data first, and then go to graphs, and then select legacy dialogues. Now notice here there are a number of graphs, and I had mentioned bar, histogram, box plot, and pie chart. Let's go ahead and run the bar chart as we'd said. So select bar, and then here we're just going to click define. And then I'm going to move gender over to category access box. So click this right arrow button, and then click OK. And SPSS runs the analysis and gives us the results of our bar chart. And notice here we have males. There were three males. The height of the bar indicates the frequency or how many there were. And for females, we had seven. So that's an example of one type of graph in SPSS that we can run. Number nine, tests on means. Now it's very common that we'll run some type of tests on means such as, is there a significant difference between the genders, male and female, on, let's say, exam one, for example. The most commonly used tests on means you'll find under Analyze and then Compare Means. And the ones that are of most interest would be these latter three. Independent Samples T-Test, which would test whether there was a difference between males and females on exam one, for example. Paired Samples T-Test and the one-way ANOVA. And sometimes you may be interested in running the one sample t-test as well. Now in this video, since we only have 10 people and there's only three males, we'll go ahead and skip running the test for now. But we have other resources where we go on to each of these tests in detail that you can look at if you're interested. But these latter three tests are very commonly used in introductory statistics courses, research methods courses, and in the research of many people. I use these tests very often in my own research. Number 10, SPSS file types. Now here in SPSS we have three different types of files and it can get kind of confusing so I want to go over that briefly. The three types of files that we have in SPSS are as follows. We have data files and they have the extension .sav and then we have viewer files which we also think of as output files those are the output of our results, and they have the extension .spv. And then finally, we have syntax files, which you haven't seen in this video. And syntax files have the extension .sps. So I go over these because they can be a source of confusion often, especially for people who are newer to SPSS. Anytime you see the extension .sav, that means it's a data file. And if you look up here on the title bar here, notice this file, Top 10 Beginners, ends in .sav. So that's indicating that it's a data file. The output files I had said, it's not saved yet, but this output file would end in the extension .spv if we tried to save it. And finally, syntax files, which we haven't seen yet, end in the extension .sps. Now a syntax file, I'll show you very briefly as we close. If I go ahead and run a procedure and I click paste, that opens up a new window, which notice it says syntax one, syntax editor. And this is the syntax, or these are actually the commands that SPSS runs behind the scenes when I ask for the frequencies procedure. If I in fact selected this and click the green arrow button, that would run, as you see here, the frequencies procedure in SPSS. So this file, the syntax file, if I'm working with syntax, when I save this, it would be saved as .sps once again. This concludes the video on the top 10 things to know in SPSS for beginners. Thanks for watching.